Hi, I'm Emma Varia, and I'm the UX lead at Frozen Byte. I'm here to talk to you about why doing the boring stuff you think is not your job really is your job. While you and your coworkers might have specific ideas of what your job entails, there are parts of your job nobody really thinks about, but which are still extremely important. What do you do? That's a basic small talk question. Most answer that with their jobs. And for some, it's easy. I'm a florist, I'm a doctor, or even I'm a games programmer. People understand what they do and move on to ask more specific questions or move on to something else entirely. Answering, I'm a games user researcher or games user experience designer often leads to a lukewarm, oh, which can be followed by, so what do you do? What do you say to that? You might talk about concrete things you do, such as wireframes or prototypes, the different kinds of user tests and surveys you run, etc. Or you might talk about specific outcomes, such as how the inventory system works in this game. Of course, you might combine it, saying, I prototype different ways of handling the inventory to find the best one. Or, I ran several tests to help iterate on the best kind of inventory. But thinking of your day-to-day -day work, is that really what you do? I, for one, talk to people a lot. My company is special in a way that it doesn't really believe in meetings. So a lot of the communication I do is either formal in written form or informal in grabbing people while they're getting coffee. But I know in other companies, the culture is different and there are a lot more meetings involved. To kind of highlight this further, I stole this image from John Hopkins Twitter. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I don't know where the meme originated from, but this is where I found it. This highlights how much our job is about soft skills. The research methods is very tiny compared to the book about working with development teams. Soft skills mean here things like communication skills, critical thinking, leadership skills, the ability to work in a team, as well as just general work ethic. In general, in your job, you need to find out what the team needs from you, how you can best deliver that to them, then you go do the work and you come back to deliver it in a way that's meaningful to the team. None of that's easy. And as you kind of could have mentioned, uh, noticed, doing the work is very small part of that sentence. It's also a very small part of the job. There was a study run on human factors students and UX professionals in 2017. The students' responses are in black and professionals are in grey. And the students underestimated the frequency of using skills such as interviewing, communications and lab user testing, as well as how often they prepare and deliver research communications as compared to professionals who actually did this job. In open-ended questions, professionals mentioned research methods and critical thinking as the most valuable skills from their education. This is very much in line with the messaging of the professionals in our community. Soft skills are extremely important. I ran a similar study on our community. I shared it on Grogstick Discord, LinkedIn, and my Twitter. But unfortunately, the sample sizes were so small and uneven, 15 students to 56 professionals, that I couldn't compare the data gathered in as flashy a graph as the original research. The open-ended questions did suggest that students have been listening to the professionals of our community. Many pointed out they'd like to improve their soft skills and learn more about general game development and other disciplines to communicate more effectively in the workplace. Professionals also pointed out the value of the same skills, with many using soft skills and communication skills daily and wishing to hone them even further. 
Interestingly, many professionals had an academic background and mentioned having a bachelor's degree, master's degree, or a PhD. Many of these were in fields that are not directly related to Grux, such as history, biology, and so on. It's therefore understandable that many professionals mentioned they appreciated the scientific training they have, such as understanding of the scientific method, critical thinking, and different forms of research. While many also mentioned they appreciated directly transferable skills they got from their studies, many mentioned they'd like to have learned more of directly transferable skills, such as mental models and technical and practical skills. It might be interesting to do further research on the thinking behind there. Also, it's worth mentioning that there is increasing awareness of Grox jobs in the student populace, as can be seen in the structure of our community. So the professional's answers might not reflect the reality of the current student's face. This might also be worth looking into further. So, what are the hidden parts of our work? I also include parts that take longer than you think, because if you ignore them, they're hidden. There are many talks given and books written on different methods and even a great book written on games user research specifically. So let's assume that there's enough material on different methods of Grux and instead look at the more hidden part of our work, namely communication. What all does that entail? Why is it hidden? And why is it part of my job even though it doesn't feel like it? The list I have here is not a definitive one, but it does give you a good idea of what's going on. First off, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention finding allies. Almost everyone in these talks do, right? But finding allies doesn't happen by just sending a company-wide email when you first join a company saying, Hello, I'm your new Grux person and looking for allies. Become one by replying to this message. If you've done this, or ever do this, let me know how it goes. But even if this gives amazing results, I'm willing to bet good money. You had to, or will spend more time building the relationship with the allies you gain than just writing that email. In general, it's a good idea to keep tabs on what they're doing and, if possible, involving them in your process through discussions, workshops, having them join in on a research session, and so on. And to be clear, potential allies can be anyone from your coworkers. They can be a designer, a programmer from QA, marketing, uh, community management, or general management, and they can be a junior, a manager, it doesn't matter, as long as they're working with you and can support you in any way they could be a valuable ally. Teamwork. More likely than not, as a Grux professional, you'll have to work with other people. You'll have to get to know them and their habits to work as well as possible as a team. This on top of the actual work you do as the team, of course. Keeping current. While keeping current in games, um, games industry in general and methods that you could use. What I mean here is keeping current with your projects. Depending on the UX maturity of your company and project teams, depending, you could have several or just one, um, as well as your level of seniority, it's likely you won't always be handed ready thought out research questions and assigned the best methods to get the answers to them, or a ready thought out UX design problem that you just have to build a single draft for. There can be times you can uh, you need to convince the team that they even need research or UX design to begin with, and after that you can start working out what kind of things you could best help with. This is where finding allies comes in very handy, as while they might not have the answers ready, they are more willing to help you get to them. Sharing results, following up, and affecting change. Once you've actually done the job of researching or designing, you need to hand it off and ensure it's impactful. 
Whether this is done by creating a presentation of the research findings and presenting it to the team, or documenting your final design solution, this takes time. This is one of those things that you know is part of your job, but can take a lot longer than you think. Also, it's advisable to follow up with the team later on to see whether they've actually done anything with your research findings or designs, rather than just jumping onto the next problem, hoping for the best. It's often a good idea to document what you did and why, which is why I mentioned methodological and best practice documentation. It's a good idea even if nobody but yourself is interested in it, in it at the time. It's very helpful if you need to come back to the particular research or design you did to modify it or copy it elsewhere. If you don't document your reasoning behind the decisions made, it's hard to know they're the best ones possible. Of course, you always do the best you can, but you might learn something new along the way that makes the reasoning not work anymore or not the best. Um, or you could be faced with a similar but not quite the same situation and need to take that into account and thus can't just redo what you did before as is. And in the best of cases, others are actually interested in what you do and how you do it and documenting it increases awareness of you and your job in your workplace. I've also added unofficial project management or logistics or other duties. This is more of an anecdotal thing, but I've gotten one's anonymous feedback that I talk a lot to everybody, but the person who gave that um, feedback suspected it was probably okay, and at least it didn't do much harm. A while later, I left the project and the team figured out that it really did a lot of good to have me unofficially transfer information between disciplines and sometimes even within disciplines. There's another example when I joined a project to help out with a few specific UX related things, but ended up doing project, man project management things instead. The team had been working together for years and it was very small. So they never made a design document for the game. They felt they didn't need it, but as I was a new worker, I needed it. So once we had that done, the team realized that, wow, this really makes our lives easier. So even when they felt they didn't need it, they really did. This all just to say that depending on your company and projects, you might end up doing very different things or at least revealing the need for various things that were thought of before. So, how to practice these skills or otherwise prepare? First off, hopefully you won't need to do work, work outside of your agreed upon role, but it does help to have a general understanding of other disciplines as well, as it does significantly help with communication. Relating to this, whether or not you have to do tasks outside of your role, it's good to discuss expectations at the start of the projects for everyone involved, both you, what you expect from others, and what they expect of you. This should help prevent some communication issues from happening. Thirdly, you probably have tons of opportunities to practice these skills even, and even situations in your life already. For example, if you're a student or a junior researcher or designer, you likely work with others already and are given assignments to do. So when you're working on these assignments, think about a few things. What's your team like? How do you best work with each member of the team? Not just in terms of skills, but when and how to communicate with them, when and how to give feedback, and so on. Who's your client? The person giving you the task? Someone else? Or both? If they, have different, if they are different people, who do you need to convince? How do you do that? And what are you actually trying to achieve? Are you answering a research question or providing the best design? Or are you showing you can do research or design well? It could be a little bit of both. 
seeing if you're in school, you have to do the work and also show that you can do the work. But also at work, you might want to give the answers to the team, but show your manager that you're doing this job well. Depending on the answer of these questions, how does that change how you'd go about writing your report or documentation? Or does it? Also, lastly, you can practice different modes of communication already. There's informal spoken communication, like grabbing a coffee with a coworker and getting to know them. Informal written communication, it's like talking over chat about a mutual interest. But there are also multiple formal modes of communication, such as making and giving presentations and writing internal documentation. It might also be beneficial to think about writing blog posts or trying your hand on making videos. If you're working already, this brings awareness to what you do within your company and possibly if they're shared publicly to the wider world. If you're a student or otherwise looking for a job or even just to get into the industry for the first time, uh, you might want to fill your portfolio and stand out when searching for jobs. And doing these things like making videos, writing blog posts are great showcases as those require yet again different kinds of communication skills as well as possibly technical ones. So that's it. I'm pretty sure I've missed some hidden parts of people's work as well as great ways to practice them. If you have any input on this, I'd love to hear ideas and solutions and keep the conversation going. Thank you.